you are invited to gather in. If you have a candle or a chalice you want nearby, you could collect it now while we settle in. Our opening song this morning is uh, played by Jennifer McMillan. And so please settle in, sing along if you wish, and uh, enjoy. service from Edmonton, Alberta this morning, we pause to recognize and give thanks to the Treaty 6 First Nations, upon whose traditional land we're fortunate to be meeting. We also extend our gratitude to the Métis Nation of Alberta, particularly Region 4, within which Edmonton and Westwood are situated. Additionally, let us appreciate and give thanks to all of the other Indigenous peoples who also claim this land as part of their traditional territory. This land has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so, which provides a rich and fertile context for us as we gather from many locations in religious community. For this, we are grateful. So greetings to everyone here. My name is Lorian Kennedy and my pronouns are she, her. It warms my heart to see so many of you joining us this morning to celebrate Thanksgiving and turn our thoughts to creative ways to recognize this special occasion. Our speaker this morning is our own minister, Reverend Ann Barker. Our musicians are the wonderful Jennifer McMillan and our music director, director, Rebecca Patterson. And also we're joined today by Reverend Lynn Harrison from Toronto. Um, and our uh, tech people behind the scenes, Alara, Stefania Godet, and Bill Lee are providing the tech support. And I can tell you how very thankful we are for their contributions and enthusiasm. Harvest is a lot of work. We gather in all that we have planted and we learn what took hold and what flourished and we're faced with what didn't take and what didn't grow. We learn what was more work than it was benefit. We become acutely aware of the ways that we need help if we are to continue. 
And we learned which efforts, even if the results were different from what we imagined, we learned which efforts produced the seeds that we will plant again. Maybe we'll plant them in a different spot. Maybe we'll put in fewer plants so they have more room to grow. Maybe this new crop will be our cash crop or our spirit field or the fuel to nourish our bodies and our hearts and our minds. Harvest is a lot of work. And Thanksgiving is a time where we not only celebrate the bounty of the produce, but also the bounty of the community, the lessons that came to fruit in our growing season. We are transitioning toward a fallow season. Where will we spend our precious energy? What will we sustain? What will we lay to rest? My name is Anne Barker. I use she, her pronouns. And for our chalice lighting words this morning, I'm going to read us uh, from, read to us from my favorite book, Spilling the Light by the Reverend Teresa Inez Soto. So if you have a chalice and want to bring it forward now or a candle, this is the time. Bring your broken hallelujah here. Bring the large one that is beyond repair. Bring the small one that's too soft to share. Bring your broken hallelujah here. I know that people have told you that before you can give, you have to get yourself together. They overstated the value of perfection by a lot, or they forgot. You are the gift. We all bring some broken things, songs and dreams and long lost hopes. But here together, we reach within. As a community, we be begin again. And from the pieces, we will build something new. There is work that only you can do. We wait for you. We light our chalice or our candles this morning in the spirit of community and all that we harvest from being together. And now for our story for all ages, you're in for a real treat by popular request, the return of Spruce the squirrel and a special friend. Good morning, everybody. My name is Alara Stefanik Cadet. I use they, them pronouns and I work with our kids and youth at Westwood. Hi, 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 and I'm Spruce, and my pronouns are E and Erm. You know, like the letter and Erm that. Yes, and my name is Elm, and I'm from Fairyland, and my pronouns are she and her. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be with all of you this morning for Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's so good to be here. Aren't you too excited to be here for Thanksgiving? Well, I'm happy to be here, but I'm also feeling a little bit sad because I lost a couple of people that I really love this week, and that's going to make the holidays hard, even on top of all of the other hard things for the holiday season. But, but, but it's a time to be grateful. Yeah, and I am. I'm really grateful for all of the really good times that I spent with those people who I care about, but I'm still feeling sad, Spruce. Oh, oh, well, what about you, Elm? Are you feeling extra grateful and excited to be here at Westwood this morning? Well, I am really happy to see all of you, but I'm also feeling a little bit homesick because some of you might not know this, but at Beltane, when the veil was the thinnest between our world and the fairy world, I got stuck here until next Beltane. And I'm really happy that I'm getting to make new friends and meet new people. And I really like spending time in the garden here. So I'm grateful for those things. But it's also been a hard year. And the holidays feel really strange without my family. 
yeah, it's a tough time of year for a lot of people. And I know that even though some of us are apart and we're really grateful for the things that are close to us, those hard things still sit heavily in our hearts at this time of the year, don't they, Elm? Yeah, they really do, Alana. And it doesn't mean that I'm not grateful for all of you. I really, really am. And I'm looking forward to lots of things this year. But the holidays still feel strange. But, 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 no, this, this seems very strange. Because, because the whole idea of Thanksgiving is to be thankful. It's in the word Thanksgiving. So, you have to have some gratitude, too. Spruce, you're right, but you gotta be a little bit compassionate, because there's a lot of hard things happening at this time of year. Okay, okay, you're right. I'm sorry, but, but, Elm. Okay, so, the last time that you were feeling homesick, you sang us a song, and it helped you feel a lot better. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving song? Maybe that will cheer you up a little bit if you share it with us. Well, that's a good idea. I do have a song for you. I really do love singing. In Fairyland, all of the fairies in the fairy tree that we live in sing all at once, and it's really beautiful. So, I do have a Thanksgiving song. Maybe you're right, Spruce. Maybe that will help me feel a little bit better. Okay. Here it goes. Hem, hem, hem. Thank you for the beautiful trees that help to bring the rain. And thank you for this time with friends and family again. Thank you for all the food that we love to share and thank you for everything that's in nature's care that was really beautiful elm do you feel better now well i don't know spruce singing about my family really just made me miss my family more Oh, dear. Well, I guess you're right, Alara. I guess it's important that we know that, that, that at this time of year, sometimes, even though there's lots and lots of things that we're grateful for, it's also important that we hold space in our hearts for the difficult things and that that's okay, too. I think Spruce is learning a lot these days, and I think we all are, too that it's really important to hold that compassionate space for all of us, especially during the holiday season when it feels like things can be rushy and extra, extra pressured. It's important that we give ourselves the space to, that we need to care for each other and love each other in all of the times, in all of the times to come. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope that you have some gratitude in your hearts as well as the space for the hard times. We offer now a special opportunity for anyone who wishes to share a personal concern or celebration. You can light a symbolic candle of concern by typing a message into the chat. And during that time, Reverend Lynn Harrison is going to give us her musical contribution. She's from Toronto playing her original song, I'll Know It When I See It. Knowing what's going on in each other's lives helps us to develop supportive relationships, to share the burdens, and to be uplifted with the joys. I've been searching since early morning for some worthwhile things to say. Sometimes I think I'm getting somewhere, then the sense just slips away. I still don't know how to explain it. What in the world 
is good and true But I know it when I see it And I see it in you There's a spell that still pulls me under I'm unable to describe It has something to do with wonder Everything to do with life I still don't know how to believe in Something beyond this broken blue But I know it when I see it And I see it in you There is something deep in the moment that can never steer you wrong You'll search for it in every story Every sermon, every song I admit I don't understand it Even though I pretend I do But I know it when I see it And I see it It's a love that has lived forever Yet it takes us by surprise It will hold us here close together Whether we're foolish or wise There are times I cannot receive it But today I hope I do Cause I know I see it, and I see it in you. I know it when I see it, and I feel it, and I hear it. I know it when I see it, and I see it in you. but join me in speaking the words of our affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Our congregation is entirely self-governed and financially supported by the voluntary generosity of our members and friends. To this end, let there be an offering to sustain the work of this beloved community. We invite you to make your donation via e-transfer or check. Details are available on our website, westwoodunitarian.ca. From you. I receive to you, I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive to you, I give, together we share, and from this we live. And I just like to add, because I forgot to say it uh, after the story time, that you can see more of Spruce and Friends on our YouTube page and our Facebook page, or come live to story time on Saturdays on, on Zoom. Just search for Westwood Unitarian Edmonton. I'm sure glad we had the offertory between the story and the song, and now everything's making me cry this morning. Gathering in community on the Sunday of Thanksgiving every year, it always falls on our second Sunday potluck day. And when we're in the building, someone always volunteers, I'll bring a turkey this year, and someone else or three other people bring a ham. 
And there's mac and cheese and baked beans and a bazillion pumpkin pies and treats and cookies and goodies. There's never a shortage of goodies. So whether or not you're hosting or going to a family dinner or maybe going out with friends or you're spending the day alone, you can count on a Thanksgiving meal in community. When we prepare our seasonal services and ritual times, we try to anticipate anyone who might need a boost, a check-in, and just offer a reminder that you are not alone. There are people here who want to connect with you. This year, it might be all of us who need a boost. Maisie really wanted to join the service today. Normally she lies on the floor in my office, just over there, or at Lori's feet upstairs, which is where she is today, and quietly listens. But yesterday, she just insisted, she was taking after our uh, rainbow friend Indigo, she insisted that she wanted to be a part of something, to be in on the action. Maisie sees us plan a lot of things. She sees us haul food out to the car and over to the church when it's a social gathering. She watches Lori working in the yard and me typing away in the office. She sees every single human and cat and bird that goes past our window and immediately lets us know that they are there. But I think yesterday she started to notice how the street was different, that there was less traffic, that people weren't on their normal routine or routine routes. There was that holiday something but what there wasn't really was the dozens of doors banging as the kids and the grandkids poured out of the cars and into the grandmas and the grandpa's houses. And there was a lot less traffic on the busy street right behind us. It feels like a holiday, but it doesn't really. We'll cook a ham, but the kids won't be there. And the dog doesn't even know how to be alone anymore. 2020 has been a very long decade so far. So Maisie wanted to reach out and connect using some of our new cosmic technologies. Hey everybody, uh, this tale belongs to Maisie Barker and uh, she wanted to tell you some of the things she's grateful for. So let's start with the first one. Maisie, what are you grateful for? cookies. Maisie is grateful for cookies. And another thing that Maisie is grateful for is flowers. Can you see the flowers? These ridiculous flowers are still beautiful. Look at this. Over here there's Celosia. There's these crazy daisy things that I can never remember their real name. And marigolds. I'm grateful for the joy and the curiosity and sometimes the turmoil that Maisie brings into our life because she's beautiful and fun. She's one of the reasons I keep walking, even when it's hard to walk. And this window right behind us, that's where my office is. It's in the lower level of our house. And I look out that window right into this flower bed every day. I'm imagining that Lori will stick, I don't know, winter gnomes or polar bears or, uh, I don't know, maybe fake flowers stuck in the snow once the weather changes. But right now this garden, really keeps me going. Sometimes when I'm tired or I think, how come I'm doing all this work not in the same place as the people? I look out the window and I remember what's beautiful. Maisie, Maisie, what else do you love? What are you grateful for besides cookies? You know what Maisie also loves? She loves when we come home and we tell her stories about good things that happened at Westwood. And I wanna show you some of the good things that have been happening at Westwood. There's another bouquet of flowers that's never gonna go out of, uh, out of season. This one is a shamrock and a bee and they have special meaning. The shamrock represents Ireland and the bee represents Lithuania. Please universe, don't let me get this wrong. We've got one that says dancing electrons unite and there's no name on it, but I bet some of you can guess who made this one. Oh, and now my neighbors are cutting their lawn. 
We've got one with awesome parakeets reminding each other and us to safely social distance. I love this one. This was the very first one that came in physically in person and it's a beautiful mosaic that came to us on Sunday. And there's going to be a slide at the end of this or it was at the beginning because I don't know which way I'm going to do it because I'm still learning that represents um, the very first one we got but it hasn't come to us in person we've only had it in a photograph whoa Maisie found a peanut Maisie is grateful for birds and squirrels that hide peanuts in our yard peanuts are better than cookies even and then here are some of the comfort squares that people have made so far all different colors different kinds of yarn there's a pretty basket weave one I made some I've been kind of using up all my bits and bobs so they're not even necessarily um, even or matching all kinds of different colors and pieces Oh, there's a bright turquoise one. We really love you and we think about you all the time. So if you imagine me working, it's inside that little office, behind all these beautiful flowers, and Maisie is probably right at my side. And I'll think of you, hoping that you are safe and well, hoping that you'll reach out and connect if you need anything. And let's stay connected. piece I'm not going to read you that was written down. I think a lot of you probably saw on Facebook or if you're on Twitter, there was a professor, Dr. Aisha Ahmad from the University of Toronto. Uh, she is an international security prof. She wrote this Twitter essay about the six month wall. Did you see that? The six month, well, I'll read you a couple of little snippets. It's like pages long, but just a little snippet. The six month mark in any sustained crisis is always difficult. We've all adjusted to this new normal, but now we might feel like we're running out of steam. And she talks about when she's in a place on any tough assignment in a disaster zone, like clockwork at six months, she hits a wall and the desire to get away or to make it stop is so intense and it happens to her every time and it seems to be common among people, this six month wall. And what's different this time is that when it happens, you wanna get away, but you can't go on shore leave from COVID-19. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run, she writes. And now it feels like we're all looking ahead at this long, dark, wintry um, tunnel. In her experience, it lasts about four to six weeks. And she posted this on September 20th, which was kind of the six month mark of when everything um, pretty much officially shut down across Canada. And one of the tips she wants to give people is to say that first, the wall is real and normal, and frankly, it's not productive to try and ram your head through it. That it will break naturally in about four to six weeks if you let it. And she goes on to say that we've already been adaptive. We've already figured out ways to survive. Being here means you have survived to this moment. And that's really good evidence that you know how to survive. So don't push to think you have to be the most creative or to run it like it's a sprint. This is a marathon. And this is a time to clear away the challenging projects, anything that is flexible in your life that you can set aside. It might be time to just listen to your meditation app or read a book. I know for me, I have a really hard time reading new things right now, but I love when the library audiobooks reads me a simple little cozy mystery. And I like the ones, I realized I keep deleting the ones that have tough voices and I like the ones that have soft voices that just talk to me and tell a story like this. 
to use the simple things that bring you comfort and reassurance. I've made a commitment on the first Sunday of every month, as long as I am well and it is safe, that I'm going to be on the front lawn at Westwood from 1.30 to 2.30. Even if it's minus 40, I'm gonna be there because I grew up in BC, I know how to be cold. You get that wet and damp, man, you just can't get rid of it. Here, you bundle the layers and you can do cold. And I can just move around and trudge around in the snow. And if we have to bring the fire pit, we will. But if you need to see an actual factual human, I'll be there the first Sunday of the month. And if you have a crisis or a need, if you need to see an actual factual human, don't hesitate to let me know. Don't hesitate to write to the Compassion Bank, compassion at westwoodunitarian.ca. We have people who will talk with you on the phone, people who will bring you groceries, people who will um, be comforting and reassuring, people who will just go for a walk if that's what you wanna do. There is no reason, no reason to be unsupported in this moment. This community is a supportive, safe place. Messy sometimes, but supportive and loving and compassionate and caring. And all the lessons that we've learned right now, we're going to carry them forward. We're going to take the skills we've grown, the perseverance we know to be true, the survival that we've already demonstrated for six months and three weeks, so we're halfway through the six weeks if you're on that cycle, we're going to take that evidence and use it and repeat it and get ourselves through. She closes by saying, take heart. We have navigated a harrowing global disaster for six months with resourcefulness and courage. We have already found new ways to live, love, Think about those revised weddings. Man, there's been some magical love going on here. She got married in the pandemic too, just in case you got married in a pandemic and it wasn't the way you had planned it. You're not alone. We've already found new ways to live, love, and be happy under these rough circumstances. A miracle and a marvel. This is hard proof that we have what it takes to keep going. So dear friends, do not despair of the six month wall. It's not permanent, nor will it define you in this period of adversity. Trust that the magic that helped you through the first phase is still there. Take a breath and a pause and you'll be on the other end in no time. Now I'm skipping all the pages that I wrote. This is me skipping through to the end. It is so good to look at your faces. Man, I love you so much. Maisie also, but she's gone upstairs, so I can't lure her up to my camera. Thank you for staying present enough in your own life to still show up in community. Thank you for the ways that you help and reach out to the people who are having trouble showing up in community. Thank you for being honest enough to know when you've had enough and you need a break or you need help, or you need someone to step in because laying it down voluntarily is what helps us prevent dropping it all together involuntarily. Lorian is gonna introduce our closing song in just a moment. And when she does, I invite you to think about the ways that you can take, um, Professor Ahmad, I skipped that part. She said, we can't take a physical shore leave, but we can take a mental shore leave. We can slow our breath, take a rest, center ourselves in whatever ways work to give us that pause that helps us to carry on. So I invite you to think for a moment about what are the things that sustain you that you can do right now, right here, anywhere. What works for you, whether it's to write it down or take a breath or meditate or sing a song, whatever it is, 
think about those little things that give you respite from the pressure. And those are our mental and our emotional and our physical and our spiritual shore leave. And so when Lorian introduces the song and it's playing, if singing is your jam and then forget everything I just said and just sing. But if you'd like to reflect and if you'd like to share in the chat, what is something you can do in gratitude for the heart and mind and body and spirit that has carried you this far that will help to carry you through to the home stretch? Where is your mental shore leave, your spiritual shore leave, your physical or emotional shore leave? What do you know? works for you that you have access to even when the hairdresser or the gym is closed valerie's already got it going way to go valerie valerie is a excellent instruction follower so lorian's going to introduce the song and i invite you to share what are the what is your shore leave Thank you, Anne. <laughs> I'll tell you one of my favorite things I've learned from Anne is, is the uh, symbolized by the phrase compassionate imperfection. So we're going to just always plunge ahead and do things and it's just fine if they're not perfect. Paying attention to all the things we can be thankful for can lift our spirits. And you know, that not only lifts our spirits, but it helps other people too. So let's think of those things, our shore leave, as we listen to Jennifer play for us, for all that is our life. Well, that was the right song for today. Because I can, I'm going to read you one more piece from Teresa Soto's book. That's where, uh, that's where my shore leave is a lot of the time. A friend of mine told me about a friend of hers. Don't worry, a lot of good stories start that way. Whose mother gave them this piece of advice. I know they look dry, seem dead, this forest of what was a sway of pink and purple with their spots and tendrils, paper thin beards and cheeks, these orchids now sticks. You must save them, put them away for a later season. 
then, as is likely to happen with people in the human condition, the mother died. And we both feel and imagine the ocean of grief, the riptide of loss, the tornado of tearing the muscle of heart that the friend underwent, undergoes. We have undergone. And then there was the day that the friend opened the door and the sun shone in, leaves quivered, flowers danced in fluid silence. Person still alive, flowers come awake. This is the advice. When the cute part of your life fades and the pretty part becomes more faint in memory, you must save what is bare and dry, a definite black line against the gray and foggy sky. The beauty will return if you leave a space for it. Uh, the book I just read from is called Spilling the Light, Meditations on Hope and Resilience by Teresa I. Soto. So we extinguish our chalice, our candles this morning, knowing that the light and the warmth of community stays with us, even when we blow out the flame or we push the button on the battery. That sometimes it's brighter and sometimes it's more dim, but there is always hope. We want to uh, let you know that, that we can have conversation time now, but before we do that, I want to lift up that we have a special guest speaker again next week, Nazra Adem. Um, came and spoke in our building, I think it was last year, maybe it was the year before. They are a, a spoken word poet and a leader in, um, in justice work for, um, for Edmonton and probably well beyond now that we have the magic of technology. Anyway, they are our guest speaker next week and you won't want to miss it. But if you do, you can find the recording at Westwood Unitarian Edmonton on YouTube. It will come up a day or three after the service. <laughs> 